Uh, hi Brian, thanks for your time today. No problem, no problem. Uh, I, I followed you for a while. Uh, I know about your success, your endeavours, but for those who aren't familiar, how would you describe your role in boxing? Uh, so I've done it all in boxing. I used to be a professional boxer. I was uh, 15 and 2 with 14 knockouts. I was a WBC Continental Light Heavyweight Champion at one time. Um, I promoted shows in Philadelphia. Um, I do matchmaking all around the world uh, still. Um, manage fighters, train fighters. I do cuts. I do everything in boxing. There's not one job I haven't done. Oh, good stuff. Um, and I know myself personally, I'm actually a massive fan of women's boxing. Yeah. I'll tell you why, I've got an excellent backstory, which I don't know if a lot of people have, but look, I've been around boxing, I've sparred plenty of males, uh, I've, I've moved, I say sp I've moved around moved the ring around. with, with Brandon Rios, Kelly Pavlik, okay. got footage as well, not lying, but what happened was, in 2013, I sparred someone called Sandy Ryan, uh, you know Sandy? I do. Yeah, and I was go going into her very confident, yeah. I knew her trainer very well, Clifton Mitchell, you know, I'd been to his events, I'd met people like Mike Tyson and Duran because of him. So I was saying to him, every woman I've ever sparred, literally, I've had to go like 4%. I'm, right. a, I'm a cool guy, I don't right. take liberties. I said, let me get in with her, because she can actually fight. Let me see what she can do. And he, he was telling me, oh, she'll dominate, I think she'll beat you up. I said, Clint, she's a woman, man, she's not going to punch hard enough. Right, oh, right. Maybe she's got a bit of speed and whatnot. Right, 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 right. I got in there. And as he said, she beat me up. Yep. Yeah, she, she don't, I, I'm a straight talker. Whenever I talk to of people, course, of course. a lot of people are shocked when I say, I'm not, just accept the truth about yourself and move on. Exactly. So for me, that's why I've, I've had such a big respect for women's boxing. Yeah, sure. Because I wasn't, I wasn't a guy walking in off the street. Because if I was, I wouldn't be talking like that. Right, right, exactly. I've been around, I've boxed. I've, for her to do what she did to me, I've always, since then... Since loved, you've been a fan since then? Massive. Awesome. I've actually awesome. Hit, hit me with shots. Hit me with shots. It, it happens a lot. I have a lot of female sparring males in Philadelphia, and, and the guys will come to me afterwards, but I've never been hit that many times to the body. I've never been hit that many times to the head. And they're going, they're not going 100%, but they're, they're trying. They're trying. So. No, yeah, I was going 100%. Um, <laughs> But I mean, look, at the time, maybe I was a bit harsh on myself because yeah. she was living the lifestyle. She was, uh, even at that time, she trained with the Olympians. Right. So maybe I was a bit harsh, but I just thought, plus I was older than her, so I thought, yeah. let me walk away from boxing. I thought, if a younger woman can do that to me, I thought, ah, maybe boxing ain't for me. Uh, but I'm back now. I had two white qualifiers fights last month, two fights in two days. Oh, wow. Fair play for you then. That's yeah, good. Yeah, good. Took them short notice. Really? L lost one, won one. That's okay. Yeah, I've joined the amateur club, but for you, uh, which is more important, how difficult has it been to build all these women like Kelly Reese, you work with Ebony Bridge, you know, where men don't, men don't realise, and I don't think it's a, they just might not realise what they can do. So they'll think, I'm, you know. Yeah, no, so, so deal with females is, it's, you know, I try to tell everybody, um, it's like apples and oranges, cats and dogs, dealing with female boxers as opposed to male boxers. Uh, female boxers, they basically, you know, if they turn pro at 135 and a fight pops up at 154, kind of have to take the fight at 154 because there's not a lot of females. It's a very shallow pool. Um, in building careers, um, they have to have a certain it factor. Like Ebony, we all know what Ebony's it factor is. Um, of course. You know, Kaylee, Kaylee, uh, you know, she has the Native American uh, thing behind her. You know, Mary McGee, she fights for her son. She's a single mother. So she's fighting to get out, get out of, um, to, to give her son a better life. Every fighter I have, there's always something. There's always a background story. And that's what I like to play on. And, um, you know, that's what I bring to promoters. And that's how I kind of sell things to promoters. Okay. Something, something I'll give advice to people, and over time, I'd like to, like, you know, get to know yourself and your fighters, work with you guys. Sure. People don't say what I'm about to say. Uh, people like Coogan and Michelle Joy Phelps, um, these sort of people, got nothing bad to say about them. Yeah. But they're in boxing 24-7, so obviously for them, a lot of their conversation is boxing rotated. Right. Someone like me, I'm a 30-year-old man, I work six days a week. I've been around boxing a long time. I, I can tell you stories. We're going to take another, but I know stories about people trying to kidnap people in boxing. Right. I, I've, I've heard it all, like, not as much as you per se. Yeah, yeah. But the point I'm trying to get to, what fighters need to understand, I don't really watch a lot of interviews. As I'm, I've been around, I've met Muhammad Ali, I've met Mike Tyson. Right, right, right. And I had to buy tickets to meet them, but I've met them. That's okay. So when they're doing these interviews, and this is what I did in training camp, well, I've been in boxing gym since I was 16. 
that's why fighters this, this is the point i'm trying to get to that's why your profiles aren't growing past a certain point yeah but we've heard it all before right. and for me all right cool but i go to work i got work here got to be on site at like 2 45 in the morning wow. some days you're done by uh, you're usually done by about 12 p.m 1 p.m wow. come home sleep then go gym so but by the time i ain't got time to sit down and watch hour-long interviews yeah. this this is something i try to i hope i haven't spoken at length no, but no. This is something. Do you think fighters need to take? You have to, you have to stand out to me. You put on exciting fights. Ebony Bridges versus Shannon. Right. Mate, I want to see a rematch. Oh yeah. If you, but don't just keep telling me your life story. Like, tell me your life story. But so, at the, yeah. So when you give interviews, you always want to say something that's going to catch, you know, is is going to catch the media's attention. You know what I mean? Like, you know, instead of saying, "Oh, I'm going to punch a person in the face," no, just say, "I'm I'm going to ram my fist so far down their throat." I'm gonna wipe their own ass or something like that. You say something crafty, something that's gonna stick in into the public's mind or something like that. Um, you know, like Ebony, like I said, Ebony, she has the lingerie at the way and everybody looks forward to that. You know what I mean? So that's what people look forward to, but she gives interesting interviews. So you have to stand out in this day and age of social media. You have to have a strong social media following too because promoters look at that now as well. So I try to encourage all my boxers to um, really increase their social media and learn how to speak. And if you don't know how to speak, I'll teach you. Exactly. Yeah. But long story short, I don't know. I mean, this conversation is not about me so much. Yeah. But I am an excellent. Talk you could put me on a top table. I'll give you one example because we could be here all day. Yeah, yeah. Something like knife crime. I'd say in the UK, knife crime is a big problem. But I'd say when the government keeps talking about punishing, punishing these people. I said, but don't focus so much on punishing them, target the root causes. Right. And the job that I work at, most people, they haven't got emotional control. So if, like, I'm very, I read a lot of books, Art of War. Even if people get rude to me and kick off of me for no reason, mm -hmm. I sit, I, I observe the situation and I just say, right, how do I, this is what I'm trying to say. I can talk about life where this is what I think fighters need. And as you said, when you said the thing about talk, but a lot of fighters can't sit on the top table like that and talk. Right. You know, right. you can't talk. Don't just keep saying, we've been doing 10 rounds in the gym. Yeah, but we know. It's the same generic shit. And well, people I, don't want to hear the same generic shit. I used shit. to work in construction. Right. Right? You want me to keep telling you, all right, the other day I was sweeping up and the day before, oh, you're going to get bored. Right. Right. So everything is redundant. And, and I think that's a lot of the problems with some of the boxers and how they give interviews. Everything is redundant. Oh, I train hard. Oh, I, you know what I mean? I, I woke Listen, we all woke up at 5 in the morning. We all went to the gym. We all went to strength and conditioning. Tell me something funky. You know what I mean? I want to hear some I'm gonna hear some funny shit. I want to hear something that's going to make me... You know, I knocked my trainer out when I'm doing pads or something like that. He shit himself when I hit a body shot. Just something that's going to make it memorable. You know what I mean? So, like, like, like when me and Eddie went at it one time. Everybody knows don't get cute. I'm not the one. So. That was hilarious. Right. So... But that stands out, you know what I mean? So, so that's when, like, you know, to fighters out there trying to trying to build um, a profile for yourself, learn how to speak is very, very important. You know, especially again, giving interviews, find something quirky to say every time you you, you know you give an interview. But again, I'll give quick examples. Well, it's like the time I was in this, I was in lift yeah. with Leon Spinks, and his wife told me. He said, I was talking to his wife, and then she's like telling me. Um, Oh, no, no, don't, don't talk to me because when he's drunk, he doesn't like other men talking to me. I'm looking at him and I actually thought I was about to get attacked oh, really? by the former heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, wow. So, uh, mate, I'm going to, I'll tell everyone this story. Uh, mate, it's like I've, I've pinned myself up against the flipping, and I'm saying to, oh, wait, wait, can you get in between? I don't want to flip and fight him. No former heavyweight champion. Right, 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 right. right. Flips. Fortunately, nothing happened. Yeah. But I genuinely thought I was about to get attacked by Leon Spinks. That's rest, crazy. rest in peace. I could give you loads. Yeah. Mike, I met Mike Tyson one time. We were chatting, cool guy. I had my camera in my hands, like one of those big video cameras. He lunged at me. I, 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 I flinched. Camera hit me in the face. Okay. Everyone started laughing. Yeah, it was oh, cool. Really? Yeah, it was hilarious. But that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Without talking about myself too much, as fighters, and don't. It doesn't have to be a gimmick. But if you just stand out, like if I'm talking to my mates, I can't say to them, oh, hey, uh, uh, Mary McGee, did you know that she's been training in the gym? Did it? But if, if say, for, for argument's sake, she accidentally broke your nose, right. that's something we could talk about. I said, Flick, she actually, she bro right, burns. Right, right, right. Just it don't have to be a gimmick. Exactly. And to finish off, but the main thing though, like I had two fights last month. One of them was a bit of a level above me. The other one, I was a level above him. The main thing, on the day, you've got to be able to fight. You've exactly. got to put exciting fights on. 
Exactly. And you can talk, you can talk, you can talk, but you have to be able to back it up as well. That's the main thing. Yeah. And to finish off, what can we expect from yourself and your fighters in future? <laughs> Um, I just actually signed three, three more females, uh, believe it or not. I didn't um, do a press release for them yet. Um, Cheryl Brown? Cool. I do my research. Cool, Lord. I, 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 uh, Cheryl Brown, I, I, she's a special one. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on with Cheryl. I had multiple fights for her. I offered her a ton of fights. She doesn't respond. Um, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on with Cheryl. Um, you know, I, I, I have, you know, 23 females. Wow. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty busy. October is going to be a very busy month. I'll be back here October, I think it's 9th. Yeah. I have Jamie Mitchell fighting Chantel Cameron. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Shannon Courtney. Oh, Shannon Courtney. Okay. So, yeah, so I have Jamie Mitchell fighting her. And then, of course, I'll be back October 30th. Mary McGee will be fighting um, uh, Chantel Cameron. So... I'm busy. I'm very busy. October will be a very busy month. And September as well. When I leave here, I have a female turn of pro September 10th. Um, I signed a three new prospects. And again, I'll be doing a press release in the upcoming weeks. But uh, kind of excited about it. All right, mate. We'll, we'll stay in touch. Yeah, and sure. Cheryl Brown, me and her were actually going to spar at one point. But when it came down to I took a look in the mirror, I thought... Like you know you're not in 100% shit, I thought I'd just leave it out. Yeah. But we could have sparred. But I thought, let me just, I learned from Sandy, I thought, don't go in there unless you're 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And not, last one, follow, following on from what you said about her, look, if someone's not getting back to you, then they don't really want to fight. Like, they, they, you know, you know I mean? they, they, they don't want to fight, but then uh, I got message saying that Dillian White's brother was trying to manage her. I mean, I have a contract with her, so... I know him, I know it, Dean White. Yeah, so I, I mean, I heard he was trying to manage her, but like, I have like a legit contract and I don't like going to court or anything like that. So, you know, I, I'll just see how it plays out. I don't have the time for court. I get, but look, I I know boxing quite well. Sometimes someone comes along, they offer you a better deal. But who was, someone was telling me yesterday, basically his fighter left him and it's like, with it like you're six and oh, six knockouts. And one, he just, and he won't even have the, he won't even tell him that he wants, well, I mean, I'm a very straightforward sort of guy. As I've told you all the women, I've got nothing to gain from admitting that I've been beaten beat, no, right, by right, right, right. I, mean, I'm a, I just tell the truth. Exactly. And if I was working with you, like, we'll finish off. But if I wanted to leave you for whatever reason, once I start getting those thoughts, I'll tell you. I'll say, like, Brian, so these are the sort of problems I'm having. Exactly. Let's try and deal with it. Exactly. And if it just don't work... It man, don't, I, don't work out, I'll I'll come wash my to, hands. Yeah. But just don't, don't, don't let me find out that nah, nah, nah. you're dealing with somebody else. Because that... That'll piss me off. And yeah. then I, I, I become a dickhead and I do dickhead shit. I mean, no, to be honest with you. When you provoke people, when you upset, so don't tell them how to react. You don't, look, I'll come to you. Like, look, I'm 30 years old. Like, Brian, I ain't got time to, like, can I just leave you? And I'll just tell you to your face and we'll work it out. But a lot of people don't do that. You know, it's funny. I always tell people, I said, if you hit me with a jab, I'm going to hit you with an uppercut. If you throw a right hand at me, I'm going to hit you low. Like, that's just me. You know what I mean? I, I, I become an asshole. I'm an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, admittedly so. I'm an asshole. Like, if I feel disrespected or if I feel like you're trying to do something to wrong me, there, 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 there's no limit. I, I'll, I'll go full asshole no more. But that's normal, man. Like, yeah. one, one spotted some guy one time. He said he wanted light sparring. So, I light. Comes out, starts swinging. I'm like, why, mate? You, you want to swing at me? I'll yeah, fuck it. We'll fight back. Yeah. yeah. That's just human nature. Yep. But good luck with everything. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Good seeing you again as well.